Hi guys, my name is David and welcome back to my channel. So today I am going to be reviewing Shelter for the Damned by Mike Fawn. This is a cosmic horror novel and it was published on the 26th of February 2021. I first became aware about this novel after watching a video on Nikki's channel, Dark Between Pages, where she did a special author spotlight with the author Mike Fawn. And based on that one video, I just knew, right, I have to read this book in April. And that was something that I strongly wanted to actually do. I do not know why I felt so strongly to actually read this book so much. I don't know whether it's the amazing cover, because it is incredible. I do not know whether it's the um, storyline or Mike's personality, but something, whatever it was, drew me towards this book. And then after that I went on to Mike's personal website and I contacted him telling him that I watched his spotlight video on Nikki's channel and that I um, was planning to read his novel this month. And once again he didn't ask me at this point to actually review his novel, it was just something that I chose to do myself. Shortly after that Mike contacted me telling me um, that he was so happy that I was willing to read and review his novel on my channel and that he would be willing to send me a free um, copy whether it's on Kindle or a physical copy. I did tell him that after I watched Nikki's video I bought it straight on my Kindle but I wouldn't mind having a physical copy so I was sent a free um, copy of the book and uh, this is the um, version that I read from. I did actually tell him also that um, I would be giving an honest review of this novel and this is what I will be giving you guys here today. I um, tell all this to authors because um, I don't want them to think that I'm praising the book highly even if I secretly hated it. Because that way I'm lying to the author and I'm also lying to you guys. But this is going to be my honest review on Shelter for the Damned. I also asked Mike to send me a clip of him talking about his novel and him as a writer um, to make this more personal because this is what this video is, this is its, this is its main goal is to promote Mike Fawn as an author and to also promote Shelter for the Damned. So with all that out of the way, let's go straight over to Mike now with his clip. Hi, I'm Mike Thorne. I am a horror fiction writer, uh, film critic, and college instructor currently in lockdown in Calgary, Canada. Um, I have been writing for as long as I can remember. Uh, I, I really can't give a specific age as to when I started writing. It's just something I, I've always done. Um, and for as long as I've been interested in writing, I have also been interested in genre. As a kid, the writers who got me excited about fiction were people like C.S. Lewis and J.R.R. Tolkien. But I was also interested in, in horror quite young. I started with R.L. Stein and then graduated very quickly to Stephen King. I think I read Pet Cemetery first when I was 12, maybe 13, um, and then quickly read things like Christine and um, Dreamcatcher, I read quite young, Carrie, The Dead Zone. So um, like so many others, um, I was uh, kind of inaugurated into the genre by means of Stephen King. Um, yeah, and, and my interest in horror has always been in, um, I think just the fundamentals of the genre and its traditions, the imagery um, the excesses, and, and that's something that has grown to interest me more and more over time. Um, in terms of film criticism, I, I was always very passionate about film as well. Uh, as a kid, like so many other uh, people from my generation and, and previous generations, I was very excited by Steven Spielberg and George Lucas as a young kid. Um, and then in my teens, I ended up getting a job at Blockbuster Video, RIP. Um, and we got 10 free rentals a week at Blockbuster. So I would just stock up on everything I could find. I, I dove into 
uh, all of the classics um, and, and uh, tried to branch out as much as I could. I got into world cinema. I, I would remember being really into Bernardo Bertolucci and uh, Michelangelo Antonioni. Um, of course, you know, the, the, the new Hollywood auteurs of the 70s, people like Scorsese and De Palma and that bunch. Um, and I also uh, became really interested in um, some of the 90s and 2000s um, American auteurs. So people like Vincent Gallo and Harmony Corinne and um, uh, Gus Van Zandt, things like Larry Clark was a huge influence and, and remains a, a big influence. Um, so I think all of these um, influences set the foundation for Shelter for the Damned, which is my first novel. I actually wrote Shelter for the Damned before I wrote any of the stories in Darkest Hours, which is my debut short story collection. Um, Shelter for the Damned is a suburban horror novel with a disturbed adolescent protagonist at its center. Um, so in the background of that novel, um, are all of these childhood and adolescent inspirations. But more than anything, I was inspired by um, two American writers who we wouldn't normally classify within the horror genre, um, and that would be Hubert Selby Jr., who I discovered in my teens who, and who made a massive impact on me, and Jim Thompson, um, the famous American noir writer who he wrote things like The Killer Inside Me and The Getaway, and A Hell of a Woman. He wrote so many phenomenal novels. Of course, Hubert Selby Jr. wrote um, Last Exit to Brooklyn, Requiem for a Dream, The Room, The Demon, Waiting Period. So uh, these two writers, um, the ways in which they uh, incorporated their disturbed protagonists' point of views into the fabric of their narratives, that really excited me. Um, and the ways in which they made no apologies for writing main characters who are ultimately subsumed by their demons. Um, so I took those inspirations and, and brought them into the context of a um, early 2000s suburban environment. And then I drew on, um, you know, some of the giants of the horror genre. So the aforementioned King was, of course, a big influence. Um, also H.P. Lovecraft and Edgar Allan Poe. A couple other uh, cosmic horror uh, and weird horror writers like Algernon Blackwood and William Hope Hodgson um, and a more contemporary giant, Kathy Koja. All of these influences kind of made their way into the book. Um, and I, I ended up writing about the things that scare me and um, finding a lot of uh, the thematic underpinnings through the revision process. So focuses on addiction, violence, um, prescriptive conditioning within uh, suburban environments, and the feeling uh, the feeling that's very specific, I think, to teenage experience um, that you are going nowhere and that you look at the systems around you, you look at the um, social designs put into place, and you think, I don't see myself anywhere here. Um, so it's a very pessimistic novel in that sense. Um, initially, the book was written in a very experimental form, almost like an epic prose poem. Um, I was inspired, I think, too liberally by Hubert Selby Jr. at that point. I incorporated um, these concrete poet poetry sections where I would try to draw the shack using forward slashes and commas, which incidentally were the only punctuation marks I allowed myself to use. Um, but a very wise writing mentor named Randy Schroeder, who I was doing a directed writings course with during my undergrad, he kind of urged me to rework the book into something um, more, I don't want to say conventional, more readable, I think is the right word. Um, and, and I'm glad I had the presence of mind to listen to him because I think it was better for the book, ultimately. So Shelter for the Damned is available now. You can get it through the publisher, Journal Stone. You can also get it through Barnes & Noble, um, Amazon, or Walmart. 
I have two more books coming out through Journal Stone this year. They're going to do a re-release of my debut short story collection, Darkest Hours. So it's going to be newly revised. There's going to be a foreword by someone who is super badass within the horror fiction world. Um, it's going to have my author notes for every story in which I talk about process and inspiration and things like that. And then it's also going to have a section of my horror film criticism where I write about everybody from Toby Hooper to George A. Romero to Rob Zombie to M. Night Shyamalan and on and on and on. Um, so look out for that. That's coming out this June, new edition of Darkest Hours. And in October, my second short story collection, Peel Back and See, is coming out through Journal Stone. I think that book contains the darkest fiction I've ever written. Um, and although Darkest Hours has its stories set within our contemporary moment, I think Peel Back and See is more contemporary overall. Um, there's a Twitter-themed horror story in there. There's a story about um, two teenage girls who download a haunted torrent file. Um, there's a story set within our current pandemic lockdown moment that, that becomes kind of the background for this cosmic horror piece. So I'm very excited about those things. If you want to connect with me, um, visit my website, MikeThornWrites.com. Uh, connect with me on Twitter. I'm at MikeThornWrites on there. I'm Mike Thorne writes on Instagram. Um, you can also find me on Goodreads, Letterboxd, Facebook. I'm all over this place we call the internet. Thank you so much for your time and stay spooky. So thanks for that, Mike. It was really cool to contact you back and forth and discuss my ideas about doing this video on your novel. It was really amazing. And um, also I will link down below um, a, a bunch of ways that you can contact Mike. He is really friendly, so don't be shy in contacting me in uh, contacting him or reaching out to him. Even just to even just to say hi, he is really really nice. So before I tell you guys what the story is all about, let me just tell you once again that this is going to be a spoiler-free video, and this is going to be an honest review on this novel. And also this is going to be my own thoughts and feelings regarding this book as well. So the novel itself is 186 pages long. It has a acknowledgements page at the back. And it also has a um, little section about Mike himself. See a picture of him. And it has a little um, paragraph there saying a little bit about the author. Um, this uh, story um, focuses around our main character called Mark, who at the beginning of the book, he is standing in the fields with his two friends called Scott and Adam. Mark is kind of quiet at the start of it, as they are, as, as I said, they are, in, they are in the field and they have come across a mysterious shack that is abandoned in this field and Mark is extremely enthralled by this, he is extremely interested in this and um, he's just staring up at the shack in awe and um, they are um, trying to find a um, secret place to have a smoke and um, Mark tells Adam and Scott that why don't we go in there for a smoke and yeah, we'll have some privacy and whatever. Um, Adam as a character um, is uh, portrayed as being kind of a um, rebel. He's kind of a bad boy or a bad guy. Um, Scott is more of a shy, um, cautious um, type. He is very timid. Um, but they reluctantly go into the cabin or the shack. While in there, uh, it describes what the cabin inside physically looks like as you can imagine it being an abandoned building It is falling to pieces All the wallpapers peeling off the walls. There's expo there's exposed floorboards. There's furniture scattered all around and it's not and it's a very um, dirty environment so after they've had their smoke they go back home and we do spend time with each of these boys families uh, some more than others, but that's okay. Um, Mark, as I said, is our main character, so he's the one that we spend more time with. His mother is very um, loving and caring. 
Um, she um, likes to uh, protect her son, and um, that's her main focus, um, really. She's very loving um, towards Mark. Mark's dad, rather, um, he's very, uh, he actually likes to discipline Mark, especially if he does something wrong or bad, like gets into fights. He uh, punishes him um, with, um, a, with a verbal abuse and also physical abuse. Um, but he does this only for a um, to actually de to actually discipline his son. Um, but most of the time, he's always saying to Mark that he loves his um, son so much. And um, apart from that, they have a very loving relationship. Uh, Mark's dad isn't an abusive um, person. He just does this to discipline his son. So as the story progresses, Mark becomes incredibly obsessed with this strange shack. He uh, goes back there from time to time. Um, it's kind of like Gollum from Lord of the Rings. He is really uh, protective over this building. He constantly wants to go back there, and um, even with his even with his friends or without his friends, he, it, this, this mysterious building is always in his mind. We do know what is actually in the building well we well as the story progresses we do eventually find out what's actually in this specific building and why mark is attracted to it i won't say exactly what it is uh, but as you can see from the cover it does actually have some haunting vibes in it so that's what that so that's what all, all i will say is it that, that this building is haunted but this building is not just a empty building it is much more than that um, but what exactly is it? Is it is it a merely a, just a haunted building? Is it someone? Um, is it a physical person in the building causing pranks, or is it a gateway to another world? Who actually knows? But um, as I said, Mark becomes extremely protective over this building that he knows nothing about, and um, he um, so when he's at so when he's at a school, he comes across a girl called Madeline. Who um, he um, in the book he um, meets her from time to time and he wants to speak to her, but he describes her as being incredibly beautiful. He is extremely attracted to her and um, he doesn't talk to her. All he does is smile at her at first and they smile back. But she um, talks to Mark and Mark talks to her and they um, develop a relationship. It's not really romantic. But it's kind of at the beginning stages. Um, they both like each other in that way. And it's a very sweet um, relationship between these two characters. She's very um, nice as a character. I didn't have anything bad to say about her. When um, Mark goes to the cabin or the shack again, uh, something bad happens to one of his friends. Um, it's not really touched on that exactly what actually happens with that specific person when he went in, when he went into the shack but it wasn't anything good uh, this book as a whole was a real page turner from start to finish it was a real pleasure to read this um it was really scary it was a really atmospheric read um if you like hauntings if you like ghost stories if you like haunted houses um if you like cosmic horror then this is a book that you should read if you are just merely into horror then read this book or if you want to get into horror i would definitely recommend this as i said it's very atmospheric it's very creepy um it's very weird especially in the last two to three two or two or three chapters of the book right at the end it gets really really weird and um that's where the cosmic horror stuff kicks in so when you get to the last three chapters of the book really pay attention because it's a really like, mind-blowing thing and I also liked the connection that Mark and the shack had with each other because this building isn't just that it's a character within the book itself and they have a connection with each other even though it's a very unhealthy relationship I like it how the um, building kind of talks to Mark and um, gets into his mind and wants him to commit all these murders that Mark 
doesn't really want to do, but he wants to, um, like, um, please this cabin, and, um, he, um, knows what he's doing, he doesn't go completely insane, but he is a really, really, he, he's actually not really a good character, but he is a really, um, interesting character to read if that made any sense. So the things I liked about this book is that it's extremely short, but I recommend that you don't read this in one day or in one sitting. I recommend that you read this in several days and actually savour the experience as it's a really great book. Uh, Mike's writing style is really easy to read. He doesn't, ha he doesn't use any complex words or phrases or anything like that. And all the chapters are really short, so if you are in a rush to go somewhere and you want to read a chapter of this book, it's something that you could easily do. I liked the characters of Mark and this strange shack, and this story as a whole I really enjoyed. And the things I disliked about this book is that uh, several characters uh, you don't really spend a lot of time with. Um, what I mean, who I mean by this is Mark's friends, Adam and Scott. They are in this book, but they are brought up very, very rarely. Uh, it's, but as I said, it's entirely Mark's story. But I would have liked to see a bit more of Adam and Scott. I would have liked this book to be a bit longer, but the length as it is right now, it's fine. My main problem with this book is nothing to do with Mike's story or this book as a whole it's the material that the cover is actually printed on as it's one of them covers where when you touch it you can see every single fingerprint on the book so if I ever commit a murder just take this and um, you can see all my fingerprints on it so what I'm gonna rate Shelter for the Damned is a four stars out of five I also want to send a special thank you to Scarlet who sent me this book and it came with this note via Amazon and it says hi David I hope you enjoy the book from Scarlet so I will be keeping this with the book. So in conclusion Shelter for the Damned is a very entertaining read. It's something that if you are a horror fan, if you are trying to get into cosmic horror or horror in general then I would definitely pick up this book um, whether it's on Kindle or whether it's a physical copy it's really worth your time it's interesting it's scary um, it's a gory but not too gory the characters in it are, are really interesting although I did like some of them more than others but I would definitely recommend this to anyone that's interested in horror and to Mike Fawn, I just want to say a massive thank you for reaching out to me and for showing an interest in my channel and for me to talking about your novel. This was a really fun experience and a really fun and memorable ride, I'll say that Mike. So thank you so much and I cannot wait to read um, everything else that you publish. So that's it guys, that is my review for Shelter for the Damned. If you have enjoyed this video, please give it a like. Comment down below, let me know if you have read this, if you are planning, if you are planning to read it, um, if maybe I've inspired you to pick it up. Um, if you have enjoyed the video as a whole, please consider subscribing to my channel and if you do, please click on the bell as it reminds you that whenever I upload videos, which are every Monday and Friday. And I will have a link down below to my Goodreads account in case you want to follow me on Goodreads and see what I'm reading or contact me. And as I said, I will have a bunch of ways that you can contact Mike if you want to reach out to him and say hi, or if you are interested in doing what I did and review this book on your channel, I'm sure that Mike will be over the moon with that. So with all that out of the way, have a great day, read some awesome books, and I will see you all in my next video.